Time to upgrade, Prime Time. Hey, what's up, my peoples? I'm Go here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the DNA Design DK27 MPM12 Upgrade Kit. So here we are, and there it is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging right up front. Here we have a nice image of Prime DK27 MPM12 Upgrade Kit. So on this side, DK27. On this side, DK27. On top, DK27. On the bottom, words, things, barcode. On the back of the box, obligatory product shots, and that's basically it for the packaging. Then moving right along, here we have the upgrade kit for MPM12 Optimus Prime from DNA Design, and this is what you get with the kit. Now you will get two sides. I already have one side installed because I did a uh, a test run of this kit last night. So, but this is what you get with the kit. You get a pair of new shoulder pieces. You get a pair of new forearms and hands. You get a new head. You get a new thigh piece. And you also get a new knee. So you have those components. You also get a, uh, a pin knocker outer. That's what I call it anyway. You get this little bit which will help you knock out the pins, and I'll show off how that works in a little bit. And of course, you get some screws. So, here is everything that is included with the kit. So, let's bring in MPM Prime and show off how all of this works. And here we have the leaning tower of Prime, and he's leaning because the upgrade kit gives him. A little bit of uh, extra height here. As you can see, it gives him almost an extra quarter of an inch of height, which is nice. Right? Makes him a little taller. I'm not going to complain. Hey, why not? Dare I say why not? But now we're going to do a comparison here of the old parts versus the new parts. So we'll start off with the shoulder here. So here is the original shoulder. And here is the upgrade kit shoulder. And you can see the paintwork is different. And you can see the paintwork on here is a little sloppy. Oh my, my hands, all right. But you can see the old piece versus the new piece, and the new piece has the hinge, which makes this section go meep, so you don't have the ears in truck mode. So that fixes that issue there. And moving on down the arm, we have the new form, and here it is with the original form. You can see detailing-wise, it matches up quite, quite well. Um, you do have some things in a uh, slightly different orientation. But overall, everything matches up quite nicely. And the major difference here, a couple major differences, is that the uh, back now no longer has the uh, visible truck parts. You can see some nice detail in there. Some of it is picked out. It's some gunmetal gray. So that's one major difference. And another difference is that you have some nice posable fingers here as opposed to kind of the weird, awkward, just always bent in a weird way fingers. Now you have some nice posable hands. Um, you have wrist rotation. You have a hinge that allows the hand to move inward if you need it to. Um, the thumb is still just on a ball joint at the base. So you don't get anything extra there. But the fingers, the index finger is on a hinge there and a hinge there. And the other three fingers are just on a hinge at the base and a hinge there. But you do get some nice posability. I don't, I, I don't really care for that pin being visible there. Would have been nice if that was covered up in some way. But... Although, still nice, you get some new, more posable hands. So now, we move on down to the legs. So here we have the new thigh piece installed, and here is the original thigh piece. You can see we get some nice silver. Maybe some details inside, which are picked out in paint. You can see the side there. And the back. Overall, this does look a whole lot better. And you have the new knee piece. Now, this is a case where I might actually swap some parts out because you can see here this, uh, this little box. Um, the detailing on the original is a lot better than the detailing 
on the uh, the upgrade kit version. So I'm probably gonna end up knocking these pins out and actually swapping these boxes and put this one on the kit because I like the way this looks a lot better. It has a little weathering paintwork going on there, which I prefer. So I'm probably gonna end up putting this box on the kit because it just looks better. It just looks better, but still, not too shabby. So what this does, not only does it give him that extra bit of height, but now it gives him some extra articulation. So originally you only got 90 degrees of bend at the knee, but now with the new knees, you get a double jointed knee, which gives him a lot more range of movements. So you get some extra articulation there and you can see now how that upper part of the knee moves. So now you have a nice double jointed knee in there, which I quite like. I like that. I like that very much. You lean there, Prime. You just get your lean on. This is where I lean. But anyway, let's get down to showing how you install all of this. So let's get down to it. So the first thing we're going to do is swap out the head. And there is just a screw in the back here that you undo. Just take that out, take the head apart, like so, and take the new head and just, whoop, and just pop that on. Of course it fell apart on me, there we go. You know why? Because everything fights you when the camera's on, it's just the way it works. Get on there. There we go. Get that on there. And of course they supply you with the screws that you need. And this goes in, get it started, and now whisker. And you just tighten that up. And there he is with his new head versus the uh, the old head here. You can see the silver is a bit more vibrant. Some differences there in the detailing. It looks quite good. Of course, you have the nice solid ears versus the uh, rubbery ears on the original. Um, it does have light piping, but it, it, it works mildly. You have to have a flashlight right on his head for it to really glow the way it's supposed to. I'm probably going to end up painting those eyes because otherwise they just look dead and I don't like dead looking eyes. So I'm going to end up painting those eyes. But. Overall though, the head sculpt looks quite nice, so let's move on. So now we're gonna continue the surgery with the shoulder pieces and install these nice new ones. So this is where this little piece comes into play. So what you're gonna do here is you're going to extend this out and this will sit right on that hinge like so. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to basically have him face down and this will serve as a uh, as a brace pretty much to kind of hold him up and you just hold it right there like that and then you take your pin knocker outer and you take your hammer and you just give it some flex and knock the pin out. You want to knock it out from the back. That's the way you want that to go. So I'm going to start thwacking and I will be right with you. And once you get that pin pushed out far enough, you just grab it with some pliers, pull it out, and you pull out that piece. And the one part you want to keep, well, two parts you want to keep is one that just fell out. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. You want to keep... This little spring here you want to keep that and you also want to keep the top part of the smokestack here and this is just rubbery so you can just give this a good wiggle and it'll just pop right out so you're keeping this as well this part whoop, that can go that can go bye bye so now to install the new piece um it helps if you just get all this out of the way you gotta flip this up too because you're gonna need all the clearance you can get here. So what needs to happen here is you're gonna take the new piece and you're gonna take the spring here. Focus, there we go. You're gonna take the spring here. That's going to sit right in here. And you can see that one end 
will sit in that little groove right there. And this end is going to sit in this little groove right here. That's where that's going to end up sitting. I'm going to sit in this little groove right there where my fingernail is. Now this takes a little bit of doing, so I'm going to do this um, off camera and then just kind of show you the end result. Okay, so we got things situated here. You can see how that spring is sitting in there. And when you put the pin back in, you want to make sure that the, uh, the, the end with the little ridges is on the front here. So then you can just slide this down and everything should go through. And once you get to a certain point, you can just use your trusty pliers and just give it that extra little right there to finish that off and there you go now that is in place as it should and then you can take the new smokestack here well the old smokestack and just pop that in and just work it in there you go there you go just pop that in there you go get everything resituated and there is the new shoulder installed. So there you have that. So now, moving on. And next on the operating table is the forearm. So what we're gonna do is we're going to undo these two screws right here. So let's do that. And once that is done, I'm just going to take the forearm apart Move that. Move this side, and one piece you're going to keep is uh, this bit right here. So you're going to keep this for the ratchet joint. So this is the only thing you're keeping from the original parts. The rest of this, whoop, that can go bye-bye. You don't need that no more. So now we bring in the new form, and you just transfer this section onto here, and that will sit just like that. And you just plug that in, plug in the other side, and this will take two screws, and we will be done with the installation there. And there you go, voila, new forearms engaged. And you got that ratchet in there, and your bending, and all that good stuff. And there you have that, so moving right along. And now for the leg replacement surgery, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna undo these two screws right here on the back of his thigh. And once that is done, we just get the thigh and then will wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And that will pop loose. May take a little bit of prying here. There we go. There we go. Pop that out. Lower leg will come out also. And we can just wiggle this out as well. There we go. And we're going to remove that. And what we're going to keep here is we are going to keep this bit right here with the spring. So we're just going to just nudge this out. There we go. So we're keeping this. This is going to get transferred over to the new part. So put that off to the side. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to undo this screw right here in the side of the knee. And once that is done, let me just Split the two halves, like that. And again, we're gonna be keeping, we're gonna be keeping this little bit right here. So take that out. We're keeping this and the rest of it can go, can go where, can go, bye bye. We don't need that no more. So now we bring in the new thigh here. We're gonna open this up. We're gonna remove these sections here. And this is going to get this spring bit here. So that's going to go 
right into the section. So just kind of push it down and have it sit in there. And that will sit in there like that. And then we take this, install the one end, install the other end, like that. And that will get a screw in the back. And again, all provided for you. And you just get that in there and secure that into place. And there it is, all secured and beautiful looking. And your ratchet still works very nicely. So, what's going to happen now is we're going to work on the knee. So, bring in the new knee piece and we're going to just plug this in. This is quite snug. Just give it a good, give it a good twist and push. Give it that good old twist and push. Work it in. Give it a little wiggle, 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 wiggle. There we go. Like that. And once that's done, you're gonna take this bit here that we got from the original, and that will just fall into that slot right there. Then we just take the other half and get that together. And of course that will be secured with a skinny right here. So we will just get this going and get this secured. And there we have the new knee installed. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to take the new thigh and just run this through. Again, it's a little snug, but just give it a little wiggle and push, wiggle and push, wiggle and push. And there you go. Now you just get that on here, put the back on. Just get that all lined up. Come on, work with me, work with me. There we go. Get that all lined up, and you're going to have a screw that goes right here and a screw that goes into the side. So, again, bring out our screws, and we get to screwing. And there he is with his new legs. So again, you know, has that extra range of movement there in the knees. Uh, you also get nice thigh rotation as well. So yeah, you get some extra articulation there. And yeah, there is Prime all kitted up. And it looks nice, looks nice. It all incorporates very well, very seamlessly. The only fiddly part is just kind of again that spring set up here in the shoulder piece. But other than that, everything is real easy to take apart and reassemble. So yeah, no fuss, no muss for the most part. And again, it does make him a little taller. Again, gives him like an extra quarter of an inch. And if we bring in this MPM Prime, you kind of see that he's like a smidge taller if he goes to the tops of his uh, his ears here, his horns, whatever. You can see he's a little bit taller now than the previous MPM Prime. So there you have that. So now... Let's talk about transformation, because we are going to be doing some things a bit differently now. The majority is just in the forearms, really, so when you're going into truck mode, all you're going to do here is you're going to raise this panel up, and then this section here will just rotate out like that. You're then going to flip this section out you have this little section here which will rotate around like so and then all of this will rotate around like that and then just as you did before you just take the hand flip it in and then you just rotate the arm around like that 
And that's how all that is going to look. And other than that, you're going to transform him the exact same way. There's a slight difference in the legs, but I'll get to that when we get to truck mode. So, again, that's all you're doing differently here. Other than that, you're doing the transformation the exact same way. So we're just going to get the truck mode real quick. Okay, we got him transformed up. So here he is in truck mode. Now, obviously, the main thing, if you didn't like the cat ears, meh. There you go. They fold down. No more cat ears. And then this will just connect like it did before. I'll just tab right over it like so. Now again, the legs transform pretty much the same. One thing you are losing, you are losing one connection because originally this tab right here goes into a slot that's inside this section. But now since the legs are longer, you don't have that internal connection anymore and that's just kind of hanging out now. But nothing detrimental. It wasn't a detrimental connection, but it is a connection that you lose. Now, as far as the uh, shin pieces here, now originally this tab here would go into the slot here in the knee. But when you do that, obviously, as you can see, now this doesn't reach to tab it under here like it's supposed to. So what you do is you just extend it all the way up like that. And when you do that, you now can tab those sections in. So there are some concessions here, some trade-offs for the kit, but now that's how that's going to work there. Doesn't make it look any neater, but hey, that's how that's going to work. Or you can leave them sitting back if you want to. I mean, if you want to leave them sitting back here, I mean, hey, you can totally do it. So it's up to you as always. It's yours to display it however you wish, but that is the alternate way to connect those pieces if you still want to connect them. So now let's compare it with the original piece in truck mode here and as you can see the original piece was a lot cleaner um the upgrade kits version uh you know you have the gaps there the hinges you can see the pins running through it so you have some more visible uh seams going on there the original did look a lot cleaner so there is a trade-off there it is what it is, and uh, ultimately, it's up to you to decide whether you feel the trade-off is worth it. But yeah, that is pretty much it for the kit. So, there you go. So there you have the upgrade kit for Bumblebee Movie Prime. And uh, yeah, it's a nicely done kit. You know, there are some trade-offs, but the kit looks great in the robot mode. Again, everything just, you know, incorporates very well, blends in very seamlessly. Color matching is great. The kit, for the most part, is real easy to install. Um, now, the trade-offs are in the truck mode. Um, the truck mode, you do have some visible panel lines. Well, more visible panel lines, visible hinges. So, you know, there's a trade-off there. The truck mode doesn't look as clean as it did before, but again, it's up to you if the trade-offs are worth the price of admission. So there you go. Now, I picked this up from Agabus. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, Agabus.com. I'll put a link to their site in the description down below so you can check that out. Of course, you can also get DNA kits from BigBadToyStore.com. As always, linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it. So don't forget to check out M Games. Check out Love Peace Paranormal. Follow me on Twitter. All of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say so there is the dna design dk27 mpm 12 upgrade kit and this is mgo saying remember you don't stop playing because you grow old you grow old because you stop playing be geek be proud palm in your face